everybody and welcome to another video. I'm Lily, aka Lily Koi. I make videos about awesome stuff. If that sounds good, hit the subscribe button, ding the bell. You'll stay up to date with my videos. So, I'm a bit of a tea lover, more so than ever. I love green teas, rubious teas, white teas, herbal teas, all kinds of teas. Now, the only real tea is from the actual tea plant. Those would be white tea, the immature tea leaf, green tea, the adult tea leaf, and the black teas, which are a fermented form of the tea leaf. All true teas do contain a bit of caffeine, and for a long time when I was recovering from adrenal fatigue, I was just not able to handle any beverage that was caffeinated. So during that time, I stuck to herbal teas mostly. However, in the last couple of years, I feel like my body has gotten to a point where I'm able to handle caffeinated beverages better than I used to. So because green teas and white teas especially are so good for you, I decided to include them back in my daily fluid consumption rotation. So because I am a born cheapskate, aka a Capricorn, I like to do everything I can to save money. Ah, tart. And as you guys might remember from my previous video on buying my food in bulk, you guys will remember that anything that I eat on a pretty much regular basis, I just go ahead and buy 300 pounds of just to make sure I don't run out. Tea is no exception. So recently I did a bit of a bulk buy on my teas and I'm quite excited about the selection I have now. I'm not going to run out for a long time. So as opposed to the heavier items like, you know, beans and rice, which I have to order through my local health food store, I can actually order the teas and such bulk online and I can get wholesale prices when I do that. So this time I used a website called iHerb.com, which is kind of like Amazon, but for herbs. I feel like iHerb is a little bit more trustworthy in terms of freshness and making sure that their stock is rotating and making sure that, you know, it's like it's just coming from one place, one seller, as opposed to Amazon. Sometimes you get some like questionable sources and with things like food or herbal teas or tea, things that I'm going to be consuming, I want to make sure that I'm getting it fresh. I want to make sure that I'm getting it from a reliable source. So I prefer to go through iHerb for my teas, which is what I did this time. And I ended up saving at least half from buying wholesale. And obviously it's more expensive to purchase all of these teas, you know, like up front, but it will save me tons of money over the next probably like six months to a year that all of this stuff will last me. So let's get to the haul. Because I am completely addicted to hibiscus tea, I went ahead and ordered two pounds of the hibiscus. So everything comes in these bags like this. Now these are cut and sifted hibiscus flowers, certified organic. And I use these to make hibiscus tea. And you can see it's just this like deep, dark, beautiful red color. Oh my goodness. And it tastes so good. Mm, it's nice and tart. I usually wouldn't drink it this strong. I would I would dilute this into some water or some juice or even like some fizzy water and drink it as like a spritzer out of a pretty glass. I'm also a big fan of throwing this hibiscus tea leaves and all into my smoothies, which you guys have probably seen me do several times now, and it just takes the smoothies to a whole other level. And it's so antioxidant dense. I mean, it's like some real antioxidant power in here. It really mm, whew, boosts your nutrition quite nicely. So since I have two bags, I'll just leave one in the bag for a while. I'm actually gonna put this into my disaster preparedness kit because we have tons of food, you know, like beans and rice and oats. But what we don't have are a lot of colorful antioxidant rich foods, which will be sorely lacking during the apocalypse. So I'm going to prepare with my hibiscus tea. The bag that I will be using to drink over the next several months, I will cut that open and dump it into this big, beautiful mason jar, which they sell these at Target, but I got them from somebody who sells a lot of weed. It's not me. Exit the pouch. 
All right. I feel like last time I got this, it all fit. Well, whatever. I have about enough for one more nice, strong glass of tea inside the bags. I'll probably make that later tonight for tomorrow. There you go. Hibiscus tea for the next six months. The next bulk tea that I got is something that I don't use it all the time, okay? This is licorice root. It's cut and sifted. I thought I got the organic one, but this one does not say organic. I'm gonna have to go and look at my order. So licorice root is one of those herbs that you wanna be careful with. When you're using herbs as teas, it's wise to be aware of what you're doing. That's why I always recommend people work with like a professional herbalist or naturopath or someone else who's who's clued in to, to herbs and the effects that they can have on your body. So like the safety guidelines on this one says not for prolonged use or in high doses, except under the supervision of a qualified healthcare professional, not for use in pregnancy, except under the use of a qualified, blah, 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 blah. not for use in persons with hypertension, liver disorders, a teen severe kidney insufficiency, low blood potassium, heart disease, or edema with congestive heart failure. So after it sounds horrible and deadly, what I use it for is that licorice root is naturally a little bit sweet. So I like to add it into my tea. I make this special tea with, um, with fresh turmeric root and ginger root, lemongrass, licorice root tea, and it makes this really, this really like thick, delicious kind of viscous, really healing yummy tea. Like I said, I don't drink it every day for a long period of time or in super high doses. It's just a little sprinkle of the licorice added in and it's quite delicious. I've heard that licorice root can be great for adrenal function, but I've never noticed much of a significant difference when I use the licorice root. It is quite delicious when used appropriately. All right, there you go, licorice root for at least a year, maybe two. <laughs> Next, I got 16 ounces, one pound of rose hip. Ah, certified organic, yes, exactly as I ordered. So these are really high in antioxidants, including vitamin C. They make a tea that's kind of similar to hibiscus, which I like to um, use occasionally just to alter which type of tea I'm using, like instead of the hibiscus tea. They're really yummy. I even, I remember years ago, I used to just like, chew on these because they were like sweet and a little bit tart. Nowadays, I'm not sure if it's good for your enamel, but they do make a very yummy tea and it's very potent. Again, it's one of those things that I'm gonna be happy to have in the house when the nuclear apocalypse happens. <laughs> Thanks, North Korea, Donald Trump. <laughs> but hey, I'm just gonna be inside my house with my windows taped in plastic, just, you know, eating my seedless cut sifted rose hips trying not to die of a vitamin C deficiency, <laughs> radiation poisoning. Hmm, very, very interesting. All right, next up, I got some China green tea, fair trade certified and certified organic. My two favorite certifications. I think I'm really gonna splurge after this and get some white tea too. The immature leaves of the tea plant. Because I was reading in How Not to Die that uh, the white tea is really awesome for um, cold brewing. Because something interesting to think about is you can um, hot brew these teas in like hot boiling water, you know how we traditionally think of tea, or you can cold brew a lot of these teas. And I heard that white tea is especially good for cold brewing. So to do that, you would just add some tea into, I do it in like a jar of water and I put that jar of water in the fridge overnight or I just leave it out on the counter. And then overnight, the tea actually brews itself. And in some teas, like white tea, there can actually be more nutrition, more antioxidant activity in the cold brewed tea as opposed to the hot brewed tea because that hot water can destroy some of the goodness. So I was gonna get myself some white tea in addition to this green tea and just experiment with that a little bit and see how I like it. And of course, Dr. Greger says that you can just make this tea and then eat the leaves as well, which I don't know, it's on the border of something I'm willing to do. And the last tea I got is some spearmint tea, cut and sifted, certified organic. 
And that is mostly for like sipping on hot afternoons, get some minty goodness in my life. Spearmint is also good for hormone issues, especially for ladies like me with the PCOS diagnosis who are prone to uh, higher androgen levels than any woman wants really. And so the spearmint tea can actually exert something of an androgen blocking effect. I don't believe in miracles, but I do believe in doing what you can to work with what you were given. Ooh, that smells nice. So minty. This one is like very dry and bulky, so I'm probably gonna need two jars. I'm probably the only person in Hawaii who's like, yeah, I keep my herb in jars, and I'm not talking about weed. <laughs> it's not marijuana, right? All right, my dears, so this is my bulk tea and herbal tea haul that will last me for a good long while, but I am looking to add to my collection. Let's see here, so far I have on my list white tea. Can you guys let me know your favorite tea or tea combos down below in the comment section so that I can perhaps expand my collection a little bit further and just get totally teed out? Because it's just such a great way to add to your daily fluid consumption while also adding in some much appreciated antioxidants and other protective polyphenol flavonoid compounds that are coming from these teas. So yeah, leave me your favorites down below and until next time, make better choices for yourselves like staying well hydrated and well antioxidanted and take really, really good care. I will see you all very, very soon. Bye! How's it going? You want your rose hip? You want some rose hips? Well, you can't have rose hips. No, you cannot. Rose hips are too high in vitamin C for doggies, because you know doggies make make their own vitamin C inside their livers, like all true carnivores. We're not true carnivores, so we have to eat all of our vitamin C. You see the difference? So vitamin C can actually be toxic to doggies. Yes, it can. I don't want you to be toxic. Jahaa, I'm so